All right, so we have a GE wall oven. This is a double wall oven. And we have an error message. It is F97. And that has to do with the lower cooling fan either not rotating fast enough or maybe something is caught in it. So that message isn't always a bad cooling fan. So you might want to just open it up first, check it. And in fact, sometimes you can actually use a little bit of WD-40 to lubricate it and put it back together. But before you put the oven back into the wall, turn it on, make sure that everything is good. And of course, always turn the power off. So I was not going to do a video, but... This is actually a pretty good, uh, I guess, teaching moment. The customer actually bought the fan. He was having issues. So he replaced the board and the cooling fan, installed it, and the message was still the same, uh, F97. So I went out, removed the new cooling fan that was installed, and upon pulling it out, I actually noticed that something was missing. A connection was not plugged in. The new fan did not have anything to plug it in. So I was able to get the old fan that they had. And I noticed that the board, which is a little sensor board, what it does, it monitors the speed off the fan so i was assuming that micro board that speed control fan board was bad so i took a chance and said well let's install it because you should transfer it anyways if it's not bad so that was what i did went ahead and put it on connected up and that was the issue so unit was fixed all is good so what i want to say is now it's a double wall oven and you do have screws along the door opening on the left the right and top so you want to make sure that you extract those screws before you can actually pull the oven out now double wall ovens are heavy so if you're going to attempt you're going to need two people to be able to help you unless you have like a lift or the all dolly which is what i use to extract it and then you can actually access the fan in the back so pretty much just uh follow along until i actually get this thing back in the wall and all was well the other issue that sometimes you could have with these is the foam sometimes on some models not this one the foam loses its adhesive or adhesivity that's a word and gets sucked into the fan so next thing you know the fan is not rotating and then you have or sometimes the wire might get pinched so be mindful of that so if you turn it you should actually be able to blow on it and it should pretty much rotate that's how smooth these fans are and also what you can do to help keep your fan running longer after you're done with the oven you can actually just open the door slightly and that will help to i guess mitigate the runtime on those fans so they will run longer now don't use the self-clean on your oven don't use that to clean the oven or to clean the debris or contaminant that might be on the fan if that's the case you're better off just removing the fan clean it see why it stopped or why it's not spinning fast but don't initiate the self-clean option on your oven it's 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 a board killer it kills the board also, if you have small birds or 
yeah, birds, it's, it could be toxic for them. The fumes that emits from the oven when it's running or self-cleaning is very toxic. In fact, I don't think it's good for human as well. So don't do it. And you end up replacing the board sooner or later. It kills the board on your oven. So, all right. So I think that covers it. I'm thinking what else I could uh, tell you. Um, this repair was not too bad. I think the hardest part of it is getting the oven out. But with the right tool, it's not bad at all. Just loosen your screws, the two on the top inside the door opening, and two at the bottom. Also, it is best if you can remove the doors from the unit. It makes it a lot easier to move around, basically. And also, if you don't have any equipment to get it out, you can still do this. Uh, maybe some paint bucket, five gallons, if they're, you know, have some help. Slide it out, set it on there, and get to work. So, alright guys, enjoy the rest of the video. You can see I'm transferring the board on this. And it's just two tiny uh, nuts. And once you do the transfer, you just plug the wire back in. The customer, you know, he was doing this, and I think maybe he just totally forgot. And totally bypassed it, so... He was close. I mean, he was almost there. So, and by the way, when you tighten that, do not over torque. It's just a little board. It's not going to go anywhere. So just snug it up nicely and it's ready to go back in. Plug the wire in. There it goes. And we're going to put this fan in. Pretty straightforward, by the way, to get it in. And also what you could do before you actually put the unit back into the wall, just go ahead and once the fan is plugged in and connected, make sure nothing is, you know, no wires are touching the body of the oven. Then initiate bake and the fan should turn on. You should see it spinning and you should not get the error message anymore. And that should be the fix for that. So... As you can see, we're putting it in. And also, if you get a fan when you order yours and you notice one of the connections or something does not look right, then make sure you, you know, compare it, look at the old one, and if there's anything to be transferred, then go ahead and do the transferring first before you actually put it on and put it back into the wall. It's such a waste of time and energy. So just pay attention first and get it done right the first time. So I think I'm gonna put one screw in, plug the wire in, and we're gonna plug it in, and we're gonna check real quick to make sure that we are good. I wish I'd gotten the code before. Do you have it by any chance? The what? The code, previous code. F97. No, I'm saying, do you, ha do you have it on your phone? No. No, I wish I'd had it. Uh, I, wasn't planning on, I wasn't planning on doing a video, that's the thing. <laughs> right, let's see. Okay, fan is on. Sounds good. You can see the fan is yeah, turning. Spinning. No, the fan is moving nicely. Both of them. So is the one on top. So. Definitely longer than it did. So that's a relay cycling. You heard that click? Yeah. Yeah. That's all normal. Yeah, if you do, it's gonna spin. Yeah. 
we're going to do this. I mean, he did good. I mean, really, he just he was right there. Probably just has a little push, and especially with him just not playing guard. That's what I do too. I always like help with little D-man or anything. Just to show up. I just help. But sometimes I can't push him like I have to drive him or I can't really push him. I don't really know what to call it. Alright guys, we're pretty much done. Just follow along to the rest of the video. I am sitting down as I put this thing back together. And all looks good. Those are the holes for the screw to be removed and after you're done to insert and secure the units. Get your model number, make sure you have the correct part and double check the good part or the old one with the new one. Do your final checks here. All is checking out well, but you still want to make sure that all is good. All right, so thanks for watching. And I do have videos in Patreon, guys, a little more detailed videos, so you can check me out over there. All right, thanks for your support. Thank you.